Line guy. Line up. Rinpoche was here a moment ago, but I think he disconnected, Ooh, well, so he well, might well, have again. some problems. Mm. Was uh, in front of it. <laughs> Trying to help Rinpoche joining. You can come and, and make the line, guys. Hey, everybody. Rico, Malka. <laughs> Boris, are you ahead of me or are you in the line? Oh, sorry. Oh, there's a line. Sorry, I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, you can get uh, in front of me. Yeah. In front of me yeah. Oh, I, I can go in. Oh, let's start. Are you going to yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of Let's people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, a lot of people. Yeah, Question. Sure. I'm making, making the recording Sorry, for Senpai, like and I'm questioning how to place the camera, and I'm not really good at placing the camera, but shall I stand where okay, the guys. camera is? I'm just uh, so waiting a little bit because um, who is talking. Okay. is in the, the public instance, actually, so I'm trying to get him here. And, and also, I need Julia like for the aspiration, so. So, shall I stand, like, for the camera? Yeah, okay. I will go and stand in the. In the uh, can anyone uh -huh. see something? Because I hear him, but I can't see I him. Can't, yeah, I can. I can. I also can see him. And he's a bit laggy he, talking. He was yeah, sitting yeah. there, and then he disappeared. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think he needed to rejoin the world. Are you, Are you talking about me? Yes. yes. And your yes, audio is also glitching, ah, Senpai. But, but no. you need to rejoin the world. Yeah. Okay. I can see I Senpai, do. but I can try uh, because I don't know how to. I just know. How to press the yeah, button team. and make it like uh, for me he's okay. But maybe I my can hear and see him. For me, good. She knows for me too. But I yeah, can so see him. But he's still stuck. <laughs> me too, but I will try. You know what? I will try. I will try it. <laughs> okay, so Buddha's hand. Okay, who can Nico see Senpai? Stick your hand up. Okay, like that. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> but this one is rejoining, so. If you can, oh, great. So I can't see him right now. Great.
All right, can everybody yeah, yes. see me now? Yes. yes. Yay. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. yep. All right, and the sound is good too? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so that's probably yeah. why I couldn't get Rinpoche in. I think I was glitchy, so let me redo that. Okay, Julia, if you want, you can go with the uh, aspiration phase. I will stand. Victorious Buddhas, compassionate ones, throughout the infinite worlds of the ten directions, land your blessings so that the inner and outer work that I accomplished today bears the fruits that multiply beyond imagining and extend to the very limits of this existence. To benefit myself, the ones I love, and the countless other beings of the thick realm. Thank you, Julia. Little bow, and we may all sit. So, um, today I will uh, share the session with um, Rinpoche, who's on his way. I think it's going to work now, but we'll make it in yet. So I will just start slowly with maybe a little introduction about our solstice celebration. Um, so um, I, I would like to begin by saying Happy New Year. Uh, and kind of a joke, but it's kind of true too. Uh, we are used to our calendars uh, that start on the 1st of January, well depending on our culture. but. Uh, at least in the West, our year start on January the 1st. And, uh, well, I, I think we all know that this is a mistake, that the, the year was adjusted to kind of fit the calendar with the astral events. But the truth of the matter is that uh, the year actually begins at the solstice. It's a new solar cycle that is beginning, that has begun today at 5 o'clock in the morning. And so I just want to... Uh, say a few words about uh, this special day and what it means around the world. So, um, not only the winter solstice, but also the summer solstice and the equinoxes um, have a special uh, meaning around the world. And usually, this special meaning is uh, organized around the light or the absence thereof of light. Um, I think, I think Rinpoche has made, let me, let me make sure of that, sorry guys. Hello, Malka. All right. Can you see me, Rinpoche? Ah, uh, voilà. Maintenant, je vous vois. En fait, j'ai réussi à venir en, en, en appuyant sur euh, joindre euh, un de mes amis qui est déjà dans la salle. Oh, parfait. Alors, si vous voulez m'accompagner, aujourd'hui, le, le coussin du, du professeur est à vous. <rire> ça, ça peut, euh, les performances peuvent être un peu mauvaises au début. Ça va s'améliorer. OK, so... All right, to welcome Rinpoche, please. Sorry to get you up and down all the time, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you can join me on stage, uh, Rinpoche, and, and use my system actually for that session so that everybody gets a good look. Just click on it and it will set your avatar on the on the screen. Magical. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I had started saying a few words about uh, the the winter solstice. I will uh, close this, proceed to the reading, and then if you will, Rinpoche, you can say uh, uh, a few words about uh, 
that someone draw, uh, someone's about to draw aspiration. So, um, right. you can all, all set, guys. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, especially in times of, uh, in, in terms of light. So, it is the dark, darkest day of the year. And there is something, um, I guess, historically a bit difficult in that fact. Uh, some countries it's very cold uh, because there is uh, less sun. So, that's not good news for agriculture. It's not good news for outdoors activities in general. So um, I, I think that's how winter became. Um, that's how winter came to favor gatherings and uh, events where families get together and kind of how events like Christmas uh, were born. But also, uh, it's also the time where where the light returns, and so the beginning of the days growing longer which is a period of the year that, that I love because uh, you can see yourself going back to, to summer and uh, it, everything kind of feels alive in the spring and all that, so I like these transitions. And to symbolize that, around the world we've been using Christmas, the Christmas lights. Um, they have uh, in Scandinavia the Santa Lucia um, festival where they use a lot of candles and they make a, a procession. But they also use like a little plants uh, in Iran, where our friend Carl lives. Uh, they have also a celebration where they stay up all night and they feast uh, and they light candles and they recite poetry. So pretty much each culture has their own thing. And um, fireworks are also a thing. I, I'd say that symbolizes the the return of the light and uh, the day growing longer together. So, uh, you know, Buddhism, uh, in Buddhism, most people are vegetarian and most people don't drink. Uh, and we're not supposed to use drugs either. So uh, that doesn't make for a, a big uh, feast or a big celebration. And I would say that in general, celebrations in the Buddhism world are quite sober. Uh, so for us, it is a time for cultivation. Uh, it is a time where we can look at the at, at the world as a teacher look at what the sun is doing and start thinking that we should cultivate our inner light and, and aspire uh to let's say better days so that's kind of how uh i work with the winter solstice and this is what our aspiration today uh the, the uh, aspiration prayer of samantha Badra is um is actually like a, a request for the light to dawn on us. So that's all I'm going to say for now. I'm just going to do the reading today. Um, and uh, Rinpoche will then make a short commentary on it. Unless you want to add something uh, about uh, the winter salt uh, Rinpoche before I begin. No, I think you summarized quite well. I mean, uh, in most of the country, it is um, the, the, the door uh, for the light to to come back to grow again, so it is celebrated. I think uh, everywhere. Good. So, open my reading to the right page. Here we go. So the aspiration prayer of Samantha Badra, and uh, this is actually a simplified version for uh, recitation because the the original one can be a bit. Obscure and exotic. Um, so it starts like this. Oh, everything in samsara and nirvana that can possibly appear has a single ground, two paths, and two results. The miraculous displays of awareness and unawareness. Through the aspiration prayer of Samantha Badra, may all awaken in a wholly perfect manner in the palace of the Dharma The ground of all is unconditioned. The self arises inexpressible, vast spaciousness without the name samsara or nirvana. The awareness of just this is Buddhahood. Unaware sentient beings wander in samsara. May all beings of the three realms be aware of the reality of the inexpressible ground. I, Samantha Bhadra, am aware that this very reality of the ground without causes and conditions 
is self-arising within the realm, unaffected by the flaws of outer and inner or superimposition and denial, and untainted by the stains of the darkness of mindlessness. Therefore, self-appearances are not blemished by any flaws. Within self-awareness, resting in its seat, there is no fear, even if the threefold existence is destroyed, nor is there attachment to the five sense pleasure. In non-conceptual self-arising mind, neither solid forms nor the five poisons exist. The unceasing dimension of awareness, lucidity, is of a single essence and yet displays as five wisdom. Five original Buddha families spring forth from the maturation of these five wisdoms through wisdoms fully unfolding from that, the 42 Buddhas originate. Through the dawning of the dynamic energy of the five wisdoms, the 60 blood drinkers come to light. Therefore, ground awareness was never beneath. Since I am the original Buddha, through my aspiration prayer, may all sentient beings cycling through the three realms recognize the face of self-arising awareness and fully unfold great wisdom. My emanations form an unceasing stream, unfurling as inconceivable billions and displaying as a vast array of suitable guidance. Through my compassionate aspiration prayer, may all sentient beings cycling through the three realms leave the six kinds of existence behind. At first, since deluded sentient beings do not dawn as awareness in the ground, they are absolutely mindless and oblivious. Exactly that is unawareness, the cause of delusion. From within that vacuous swoon, a fearful, vague cognizance stirs. From that, self and others, as well as envy arise. Through the gradual blossoming of latent tendency, samsara unfolds, taking its natural course. Due to that, the five poisons of the afflictions flourish and their karma become an incessant flow. Thus, the ground of sentient beings' delusion is mindless unawareness. Hence, through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, may all recognize awareness itself. Innate unawareness is mindless, oblivious cognizance. Imaginative unawareness is the clinging to the duality of self and others. This twofold innate and imaginative unawareness is the ground of illusion of all sentient beings. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, may all samsaric sentient beings, darkness, all mindlessness be dispelled. May their mind of dualistic clinging be translucent. And may awareness recognize its own base. The mind of dualistic clinging is doubt from the arising of subtle fixation. Dense latent tendencies gradually unfold, be it food, wealth, clothing, places, companions, the five senses pleasure, or beloved relatives, we are tormented by our attachment to what seems attractive. These are mundane delusions. The karmas of perceiver and perceive are never exhausted. When the results of clinging ripen, we are born as hungry ghosts tortured by craving. How pitiful is our hunger and thirst. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, may sentient beings, full of attachment and clinging, never cast out the torment of desire, nor welcome the craving of attachment, but may awareness take it very seat, letting mind relax in its own pace, and may discriminating wisdom be attained. A subtle mind of fear stirs around the appearance of external objects. Thus, the unfolding of hatred's latent tendency leads to powerful enmity, beating and killing. When the results of hatred ripen, oh, how we suffer by being boiled and burned in hell. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, when fierce hatred stares up in all sentient beings of the six realms, may it relax in its own state without adopting or rejecting. May awareness take its own seat, and may lucid wisdom be vain. Our own mind being haughty, it vies with others and dismisses them. 
through the arising of intense pride, we experience the suffering of our fighting and struggling with us. When the results of those actions strike us, we are born as God, experiencing transition and downfall. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, when sentient beings give rise to such audience, may they let their mind relax in its own state. May awareness take to the very mind too. And may the wisdom of equality be Triggered by the latent tendencies of rampant dualistic thinking, the competitive mind of fighting and struggling blossoms from the pain of praising ourselves and disparaging others. Being thus reborn in the Asura realm of killing and slashing, we take a deep plunge into the realms of hell. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, when a competitive mind fights and struggling arise, may we not entertain enmity, but let it relax in its own place. May mind take its very own beat, and may the wisdom of unintended enlightened activity be. Mindlessness, indifference, distraction, obtuseness, dullness, forgetfulness, unconsciousness, laziness, and bewilderment result in our roaming as animals without any help. Through this aspiration prayer of myself, the Buddha, may the radiance of lucid mindfulness shine in the darkness of our bewildered darkness, and may non conceptual wisdom be all sentient beings of the three realms are equal to myself, the Buddha, the ground of all, but for them it has become the ground of mindless delusion. Right now, they engage in mindless activity, with the six kinds of karma being like delusions in a dream. I, however, am the primordial Buddha. In order to guide the six kinds of beings through emanation, to the aspiration prayer of Samantabhadra, May all sentient beings, without exception, become awakened in the Dharma Dharma. Aho! From now on, whenever mighty yogi practitioners make this powerful aspiration prayer, within self-luminous awareness free of delusion, all sentient beings who hear it will fully awaken within three lives. During solar or lunar eclipses, when clamor or earthquakes occur, at the solstices or at the turn of the year, if we let ourselves arise as Samantabhadra and recite this prayer within the hearing of all, through the aspiration of us yogic practitioners, all sentient beings of the three realms will gradually become free from suffering and then swiftly attain Buddha Buddha. And that's it for today's reading. you can proceed whenever you all right um this is actually an extremely important prayer it might not look like at first sight but it contains the key out of suffering the key out of samsara but first of all everybody here is well mm -hmm. <laughs> yes thing that uh, needs to be explained maybe at the beginning is that when we are talking actually to about um, Samantha Bhadra or Kultu Zangpo in Tibetan uh, it does not just refer to somebody else but it refers to our own minds our own very minds it um, it is a prayer which is dealing with understanding realizing the true nature of our mind so it makes actually of this text um, a very important and um, very clear um, teaching which I will just summarize uh, not to be too long first of all and because it would take really a long time to go in detail uh, sentence by sentence or verses by by verses So, this text refers to how we are coming into the samsara, how we are coming into existence, how we are coming into perceiving the appearance of this reality, 
and the and emphasize on the mechanism which brings us to existence and namely to the law of causality what we call the law of karma and uh, because once we once we can really understand the law of causality we understand the the, the very reality of um, of our existence and everything that we perceive we can say that um, actually we we are within the samsara without we are within the suffering because we have created a cause for it there is nothing that appears to us there is nothing that we do experience which we have not created the cause everything is coming from our own mind and so when the prayer says that uh, realizing um, for example that everything has a single ground yet two path and two fruition it means i mean the single ground is our own minds it refers to our own minds there is a single ground there is only one nature uh, among all uh, consciousness our consciousness is the single ground yet according to what we will decide to do according to our wisdom or lack of wisdom according to our awareness or lack of awareness we will choose one of the two paths one which lead to suffering or one which leads to enlightenment and consequently to our choice there will be two fruition which are on one side suffering if we have chosen the path that lead to suffering or happiness if we have chosen the path to to um, to enlightenment or to understanding the the true nature of our reality and this is something which is at the same time basic basic in the sense of uh, the root of all teachings not in the sense of basic very easy because actually this is one of the most complicated points to to really understand and um, it is the key uh, to happiness the key which can really take us away from any kind of suffering and this is why we recite actually this prayer in in any important moment because this is our goal i mean once we engage on a spiritual path what we are looking for we are looking for happiness every being every sentient being is looking for happiness and so do we and at the same time we are looking for happiness we are of course looking for uh, getting rid of suffering yet while we aim so much to happiness and we aim so much are at getting rid of suffering we are constantly creating causes for suffering and we are getting causes for suffering because we are within uh, ignorance and ignorance here is not the lack of knowing it's not because you don't know a book or you don't know a text but ignorance here refers to um, not understanding the true nature of our reality it means being in duality actually constantly perceiving phenomena not as they are but as we project them to be by seeing constantly duality and acting based on this ignorance we are creating many negative causes and so when we talk about negative causes we are not talking just about very important or huge causes like um, like killing somebody but just our way of thinking have been a little bit impatient being a little bit um, annoyed or turning towards anger is creating causes and all these causes remain on our consciousness till they ripen and the ripening of all these causes is building what we perceive when I say what we perceive, I refer to the five physical senses and the mental sense. So in a way, we can say that everything we perceive is the result of the causes we have accumulated and that we are constantly accumulating. When we talk about the law of causality, 
uh, some might think that uh, the karma is is simply visible in what we experience in the sense of meeting such people or that people or meeting a situation on an or another but um, actually the law of causality is a little bit more complex and goes a little bit deeper in the sense that it defines everything we do perceive when i say everything we do perceive is everything we are looking hearing and so on when we observe a phenomena we because we are in ignorance because we are in duality we tend to think that this phenomena exists out of ourselves as an independent phenomena as a phenomena which would exist uh, from its own way from its own side but it is not like that a phenomena does not exist from its own side it exists because i have created the cause for it I am the observer and wherever I think I am, I observe a phenomena which mistakenly I perceive as outside of myself. This is duality actually, when we are talking about duality, it means I cling on the idea of myself placed somewhere and placed somewhere because um, I perceive an outside reality in the form of duality and so myself being somewhere and a phenomena outside of myself and even worse in a way a phenomena which exists from its own side because I perceive a phenomena outside of myself and I think it exists from its own side I will generate a certain amount of uh, mental factors I will like it I will dislike it I will uh, get attached to it I will be afraid of losing it and uh, through these uh, mental factors I will engage in wrong actions if I fear to lose a phenomena to lose an object to lose a person to lose a situation I will develop a kind of um, plan or idea how to keep it close to me how to get more of what i like how to get rid of what i don't like and so on constantly creating causes which i will experience in the future actually at some point the the prayer speaks about fear and the connection we have with with fear because everything or originates pretty much from fear the fear based on our attachment. I see the phenomena, I'm afraid to lose it, and I generate many other thoughts in order not to lose it. And uh, I spend a lot of time in that. As a matter of fact, I might spend my entire existence running after uh, projections, after um, expectations, and uh, in any case, running after phenomena that uh, do not exist the way I tend to think they do. I come back on that. I believe that phenomena have a self-inherent existence outside of myself, outside of my mind, as if they would exist from their own side, but they do not. They do not because they appear to my mind based on the causes that that very mind has created in that way we say that everything is of the same nature as my own mind all phenomena that i perceive is of the same nature as my mind and when i understand that i stop to project on that phenomena i stop to fear to lose that phenomena I stop to generate any kind of negative mental factor towards that phenomena because I understand that this phenomena is not actually existing outside of my mind but is existing within my own mind at the very moment I realize this I generate a kind of wisdom uh, there are five wisdom I will not go in detail in each of them one of them is called the, mir the, the wisdom of mirror or um, mirror, -li mirror like wisdom 
which is to observe phenomena in the same way I would look at a phenomena in a mirror. The mirror is not judging what it reflects. It simply reflects it in peace, in complete uh, absence of judgment. If we can do that towards all the phenomena and all the reality which surround us, then we have a mind which is at peace. And further that peace establish itself and less we are creating negative causes and further we are walking onto the path towards enlightenment. So we can say, if we choose the path which leads to happiness, we choose the path which makes us to understand the true nature of that reality, the reality surrounding ourselves, and we choose the path of um, peace, the path which pacifies the mind. The more we pacify the mind, the less uh, negative causes we are actually accumulating. There are two things that this uh, prayer is very much emphasizing on. Uh, the first part is all what I have talked about now, the nature of the mind. And the second is uh, bodhicitta, is the motivation. We were talking just before about the wisdom and different aspects of the wisdom. And the core wisdom which will advert the consequences of ignorance, which is this uh, wisdom realizing the true nature of phenomena. But why are we doing all this? is what will define also the depth of our path. If we are looking at um, a path to abandon the cause of suffering, just so that ourselves get rid of suffering, of course it's already very noble, uh, in the sense that um, we are getting off the samsara and get rid of suffering and the cause of suffering. But there is a much greater motivation which is the motivation of helping the others why i wish to get rid of suffering why i wish to reach enlightenment because out of this state out of the wisdom i will generate the wisdom that will establish itself in my own mind the wisdom that i will recognize with my own mind <clears throat> out of that wisdom out of that state i will be able to help a lot of sentient beings all the sentient beings who have created a cause to be helped by a Buddha, I will be able to help. Thus is the motivation of the Bodhisattva, the motivation of the higher path, which leads to enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. And both the wisdom and the motivation are helping each other. We offer often compare them to the two wings of the same bird. If the bird wants to fly, it needs two wings. It needs wisdom, and namely the wisdom that realizes the true nature of phenomena, and compassion, or called sometimes bodhicitta, the mind um, for awakening, the awakening mind. The, that state of mind, that um, core state of mind or core motivation which makes one realized that everything we do is for the sake of all sentient beings is for the sake of helping others to get rid of suffering to find their own way out of samsara on the other hand if we are not choosing this path then the text, the prayer, the uh, aspiration prayer is describing that through pride, through anger, we are accumulating causes for lower rebirths uh, as animal, as um, hungry ghost, as hell even. We can also take rebirth as a god or demigod, but these are not um, satisfactory rebirth in the sense that they are impermanent and once the cause which brought us to reborn in, in the God realm uh, 
uh, will end, we will take a lower rebirth again and again and again, as it has already been the case since beginningless time. So if we do not wish to remain uh, forever, in a way, in this um, cycle of conditioned rebirth, uh, we need to find, we need to, to follow the path toward the line. And we need to follow, we can follow it for the, for the sake of all sentient beings. By choosing to do it for the sake of all sentient beings, we are uh, somehow giving a very great strength to everything we do. The Bodhisattva who has realized Bodhicitta will do all his action, even daily action, with the motivation of helping the others. Which means that the practice of the Bodhisattva, the practice of the, of the practitioner in general, is not just when he sits on a cushion or rings a bell, or light a little candle or put some incense. The practice, the core practice is anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Once we engage into the path towards enlightenment, it's not just a few minutes here and there that can change our minds. It's truly trying to perceive in every phenomena the true nature of our own mind. To find in any phenomena, Samantabhadra, into example, the nature of the mind. That's why when, when we see a picture, a representation of uh, Samantabhadra, it is a naked Buddha. There is no ornament, there is no cloth, there is nothing. Because when we are contemplating the true nature of phenomena, there is no concept, there is no thought arising saying, I want this, I don't want that, this is beautiful, this is not. The mind dwells in a, a type of a complete peace. Um, and at the same time, of course, a Buddha perceived the reality, perceived the phenomena as any other sentient being. But when a Buddha observed this phenomena, reflect somehow this phenomena, there is no wandering of the mind, there is no thought, judging, criticizing, being annoyed by anything. In a, from any other phenomenon. The Kuntu Zongpo prayer, aspiration prayer, tells us where we need to go. It's actually a kind of condensed version of all the teachings of the Buddha. What we need to follow, what we need to abandon, and the key, the core of that prayer, and the key, the core of of Buddha Dharma is to recognize the true nature of any phenomena, the true nature of what we call our reality and the true nature of our own mind. Our own mind is like space. There is no obstruction. There is nothing in it. It uh, appears very spacious and pervades everything. So when the aspiration prayer is talking as um, I, Kuntung Zongpo, have realized the truth of this and that, we are not talking about somebody else who has realized this and that. We are talking about aspiration for ourselves to realize it. Ourselves to understand what needs to be followed and what needs to be abandoned to achieve the clarity of our mind and to be able to remain in that clarity. So with that new understanding in a way, with particularly the understanding that we are talking about our own mind while we are reading this prayer, I can only but encourage you to uh, read it again and again and try to find very detailed um, description and explanation about the prayer because it is extremely important. So I'm very grateful to, to have been invited actually to give a few words about, um, about this prayer and um, 
I hope it will benefit you uh, further by rereading and by working a little bit on your mind and the understanding about the true nature of reality. I hope I was not too long. I thank you. Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, uh, are you available for a couple of questions for our audience? Yes, I can be. Okay, so anybody has a commentary or a question? I, I have one, if I can. <laughs> um, actually, um, a lot of us are, are not very familiar with uh, the symbolism and iconography of Pashraikana, uh, because I try to make this little sangha as inclusive as, as possible, so I, I don't really get into the specifics of the of Ashrayana, but uh, I think it would be uh, maybe interesting uh, to hear you about what are these 42 Buddhas and the 60 blood drinkers, basically, who are these 100 uh, peaceful and restful uh, deities uh, that, that are spoken of in Tibetan Buddhism? Are they like objects of, of worship, or what, what do they represent? And to go to go very much in detail would take us really in in, in a lot of symbolism. But uh, when in the prayer they refer to all these manifestations, it refers actually to all the manifestations that uh, Buddhas are able to take in order to help all sentient beings. The the motivation of a Buddha is uh, truly to help all sentient beings without any limits in time and space. And once somebody has realized the true nature of his own mind, there is no limitation in into where to go. So a Buddha can have many manifestations at once in order to help a lot of beings from as many realms and as many worlds as possible. So when they talk about all this, um, actually blood drinkers, they, they refer to emanations of some Buddhas who are taking shapes according to what are the needs. Some people will need to meet uh, peaceful beings in order to work on, on their minds. Some other people will need wrathful beings. And when I say wrathful beings, it can refer both to wrathful Buddhas, so really Buddhas under the form of a Buddha, as um, some practitioner can, uh, can see, can uh, observe, but it can also refer to other sentient beings that we meet and appear wrathful. If we come back um, to what I explained a little bit before, everything we do perceive comes from our own karma, from the causes we have accumulated ourselves. So if you are actually meeting somebody who is nice or somebody who is not nice, it is not a quality which exists outside of your own mind. It means you are perceiving something that you have yourself created the causes of. Now you have the choice in front of a pleasant situation or an unpleasant situation. Either you give into it because you think it is outside of yourself. It is uh, following then the thought of, of duality. Or you understand that it is an emanation some uh, of your uh, of your own mind it is of the same nature as your own mind and in front of a situation which would either scare you or that would generate generate fear or that would annoy you or piss you off you have the choice to work on it and if you decide to work on it if you decide instead of getting angry to practice patience you are actually transforming a negative emotion into uh, a positive um, a positive one so you are transforming negative emotion into a kind of wisdom yes so when we talk about this all these beings it refers to all the different uh, manifestation our own mind can have to benefit uh, all sentient beings i hope 
that's uh, answer answer your question. Yes, thank you very much. I have a question if I can Somebody... ask. Somebody Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, please yes, ask you can. Um I'm still not very familiar with Buddhism and um so from from the only thing I like perceive by myself is that that like I would say the thoughts are not mine. Like I could in meditation I had one experience where I had like three thoughts at once, for example, and it felt like if I would like tune into three ch TV channels at once. So, but for me, still, what I don't get at all is like, what is the end game of Buddhism? Is it non-existence, or is it just basically experiencing something without uh, wanting something or not wanting something? And and what's the what's the what's basically the transition in Buddhism after death? Is 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 there one? Is there something afterwards, uh, or 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 is there a non-ex non-existence for an enlightened being? How does this work? That's many questions in once, and uh, it would require probably an entire teaching about um, death and the process of dying and the, and the rebirth, the process of rebirth, and, and so on, based on the law of causality, of course. Um, there are different uh, aims, I would say, and they differ uh, according to the different uh, path that you are choosing. In Buddhism is uh, basically divided in two main branches. One is called Theravada or Hinayana, and one is, and the other one is called Mahayana. Uh, the goal of the Theravada tradition is to end suffering. So this is somehow the goal. Once the minds uh, reach the ends of suffering, reach uh, the uh, realization of the true nature of, of phenomena, and, and the body pass away, the consciousness enters into a kind of um, meditation, extremely deep type of meditation, um, which can last actually very long. It's not a normal meditation, it's a state of realization. The mind is entering actually into what we call emptiness, not being the absence of everything, but the origin of all. So this is the Theravada. The same realization can be, of course, obtained by the Mahayana practitioner, but uh, the Mahayana practitioner will not remain in that state of mind because his goal is to help uh, as many beings as possible. Yet, once you have realized emptiness, once you have reached that uh, state of mind, uh, you come back to the samsara, you come back eventually as a human being, but uh, your mind is not in ignorance anymore. Your mind will perceive in every phenomena its true nature, and uh, your action of body, speech, and mind will be the expression of your wisdom, the wisdom you have acquired uh, by your uh, spiritual path. We say that uh, the mind is uh, beginningless and um, without any hand. And, so it of course does not stop when you die and uh, it did not start it when you're born your consciousness is coming uh, from a very very uh, long lineage of rebirth and we can say that uh, through this lineage of rebirth you have already experienced everything that could be experienced in this reality so if in this life you are in contact with dharma you have the chance to, to to hear dharma and to be able to practice and meditate on this kind of topic it means you have created a cause already for that it means you have already established the the right basis first to have a precious human rebirth because you did not reborn uh, as uh, right now i'm seeing you as a mushroom but obviously behind <laughs> it there is a human being so uh, you are not an animal, you are not in the hell realm, you are not in. The, you are not a, a spirit wandering without end, you are not a god or a demigod, you are a human being. And you are a human being with, uh, with a precious human being, but you, you have taken a precious human rebirth because your body seems to have all the capacity to understand and you have found the Dharma. Now the point is, what, what 
are you doing? What are we doing with this precious human rebirth? Will we take all the advantage in a way and enter into the proper analysis of our um, existence? And as you said, what is what is really the goal uh, of this existence? And to align uh, our life according to our goal. I say that because there are many people who, are, who call themselves Buddhist because they like Buddhism or they like some element of Buddhism, but they do not really change their life. They do not change the way they live, they do not change the way they think, and thus, though they would like to reach happiness, they will not because they are not actively, actively working in that direction. So we can say that the first goal of Buddhism is happiness, and the higher goal of Buddhism is happiness, uh, which can lead us to help as many other beings as possible to reach also that state of happiness. I hope this answers. Yeah, uh, answers a lot of questions actually, answered a lot of questions. Thank you. Maybe one more? Do you have a question you project? Is your arm in the air? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious if you have thoughts. If someone doesn't believe in reincarnation, is there a way to think about the teachings from today that is beneficial to how we approach this life? Yes, absolutely. Uh, even if you don't believe in reincarnation, you can benefit from this prayer in the sense that it teaches that engaging into negative emotions leads to suffering and uh, it's not necessarily suffering in the next life and the next next life it is suffering here and now uh, as soon as i'm anger angry against somebody uh, actually most of the time it has no impact on that somebody but it disturbs heavily my mind it, it, it disturbed my mind and my body. We know that anger has a lot of negative consequences regarding our immune system, for example, and, and, um, and, and the, the way uh, our organs are functioning. So if you are jealous or if you, are, uh, you have a high pride or anger, it will have a, diff a different effect on your health. So even without to um, really think about the law of causality over several lives, already within this life it has consequences it comes very close actually to what the the, the quantum physics is explaining uh, everything we do perceive uh, depends on the on the perceiver the one who observe is the creator of what is perceived and every and the way we do react towards what we perceive create causes towards will what we will next encounter so if right now I, I meet a situation, whatever the situation is, which might be the result of past accumulated causes, either I will generate peace and I will welcome this event and turn it into a spiritual path, whatever it is, pleasant or unpleasant, or I will generate some negative thoughts because I don't like it, because it is unpleasant. But you know, a lot of things which are unpleasant, I cannot change them. And if I cannot change them, uh, to fight against or to be heavily disturbed by them uh, is pointless. Pointless, loss of time and generating a lot of negative energy. And if we come back to the quantum physics, uh, if you generate some negative energy, they will bounce back as negative perception. I think yes, if, even if, unfortunately, I would say we don't, we don't believe in, in reincarnation, we can benefit from this brain. joining us for the rest of the session today if you allow i i will not i have some other things to attend okay then um i would like maybe uh to invite all to rise and uh, we will simply uh, let you go thank you very much i am very grateful that you were here today uh, with this profound and hard to understand teaching and uh, I hope we can do this uh, 
but other times, if, if you're up to it. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as I already told you, I will gladly uh, join whenever I have the time and the opportunities. So we will surely meet again. For now, I wish you all a very nice time and to continue the practice uh, in this wonderful virtual temple. Thank you. Thank you and have a great Thank day. Thank you everybody. very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Zen uh, is it just me or is the frames uh, quite bad right now? Otherwise, I have to restart uh, VR chat. Yeah. yeah, me too. No, it's no, bad for me bad. too. I crashed. Everybody. I, crashed uh, I have I have like 11 frames yeah, at the moment. It's it's quite. Uh, I don't know what's causing it. Okay. Me too. Actually, it's probably yeah, me too. Yeah, where, where I would like to invite you guys. We noticed a significant performance drop mm -hmm. because of uh, there is physics and the pickable uh, objects over there, and it's being calculated all the time. So we need to deactivate that to regain our performance, but uh, we didn't get to it yet. So very sorry about the frame rate today. Mm -hmm. However, I made you all raise because. I would like to invite you there if you want to have a peek, uh, if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, although it's a bit laggy, I believe it looks very beautiful. So my idea was that we could go there and do a shorter meditation today in the cafe, if you're up to it. Should we relaunch the world to, to get the performance better or something? Because I've seen the cafe before, but uh, it didn't take a performance hit for me. R relaunching doesn't I, help. I would Recommend that at place. least everybody up optimizes their to safety settings. A new instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. maybe. Mm -hmm. I think to I go there we should open still lagging. Oh. Mm. I will be in a public instance and you can all join me there. Okay. We can Straight just up. open okay. a portal okay. to you. Okay. Well, could you do with them actually? That, that would work very well. Yeah, sure. I'll open a portal out here. Alright. I wonder if the recording also so laggy. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> well, can the you audio is kind of more important. Of me so I can open the portal. Sorry. Uh... Hi, Fraser. Hey, my man. There we go. Jump in the portal and chat when we get in there. Yeah, sure. Okay, give it a sec. People are loading in. Uh, this is normal. The pet. Portals only last a bit, that's why I said let's jump in. Yeah, just yeah, give sure. you, uh, the effort yeah. also downloading, so give it a moment. Did you see my chat message? I heard you. No, I haven't seen it, but I heard your question. Yeah. <laughs> All the people jumping in. I also like to think about reincarnation in terms of. This life, you know, the chapter from my last career to the previous one. This whole. Someone getting a really yeah, big echo? Yeah, I, I, turned it, I turned the volume down. Are you hearing still an echo? No, it's better now. So, yeah, yeah like thinking the about yeah. the way I acted at university yeah. gives me a completely different next chapter of my life. And then what I did yeah. in that section led to this totally different chapter. Yeah. All right, guys. But it's, um, it's like reincarnation over life, something uh, okay. that's a reality for you, or something to that's walk. totally impossible. Okay, okay. It's, so, sorry, it's guys. Uh, let's start to walk yeah. uh, uh, towards the cafe, maybe, and you, you can chat on the way. I'm actually gonna thank you for today. Actually, it in, it just okay, improved. Uh, yeah, the frames improved a bit. Oh, there oh, it goes right again. Right. Yeah, I'm leaving. Yep. That's really nice, though. Okay. Goodbye. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.
How are you, Rico? Doing well. Thank you very much, Sankey. What about you? Yes, I'm doing well as also. Uh, I, I was happy actually to have Rinpoche with us today. It's uh, I like collaborations in VR. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. But I must, I must uh, confess that he was explaining some stuff that was a little bit complicated for me, as I am not very used to what all the elements have, of what Buddhism. What you guys have, have received today is probably one of the highest teachings in Buddhism. That's like to completely get what he was talking like? about. You need to be awake, yeah. basically. But the idea is to expose you over and over again to that information so that it makes its way into your mind slowly. And at one time, mm. it will crack the egg and, and the light will get out. Oh, you, nice. so, you, be, you become a nice meal for someone else. I mean, if you crack the egg, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's good. Yes. Yeah, but also, you know, Rinpoche is used to speak to audiences of uh, seasoned practitioners. So he, he probably doesn't know exactly what our... And our levels are very varied here because we've had people practicing for a number of years and some are just starting. So it's difficult to kind of find the right level of, uh, of details to use. A bunch of anime girls so and giant right, mushroom. So <laughs> I've moved some of the pickable objects that were touching each other and kind of <laughs> scattered them Thank so you. that the, <laughs> I think they will not uh, be in that state, hopefully. I think we'll be good. Besides uh, having so many people, obviously we're going to have some performance from, from that. But well, it looks well, like we're moving so right, right now. Yeah, yeah well, it's great, great and then it starts for a couple of seconds and then it's great again. The stuttering is probably people still joining the world, because uh, there are new people still entering. If only we could make the If only we could make the object trade again. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> if, you, if, you have, if you have pickable objects like this, and they are touching each other, and they they simultaneously have uh, physics applied to them, and also. So network synchronization, they can get into a state of contention that causes issues. Um, and like they were kind of stacked in a way where uh, if someone touched them, they would become active and then like interfere with each other. So maybe we could make them have... repulse each other a little bit so that they <laughs> I, I... move away. I think we, we have a plan, because one solution to that is to not apply physics to them. So they mm -hmm. will be objects, but then when you let them go, they will stay where they, they are. Float. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that will eliminate the problem. Hello, um, Michael. Okay, so there's a second Smith floor. Now. Maybe you, you guys would Can like to have a look, up? and then we can do our little okay. session. Up or down? Let's, let's go see what upstairs look like. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Rinpoche. So, hey, what do you guys think about this cafe? It's beautiful. Well, I'm glad I left my past behind, otherwise, I would never leave this place. <laughs> So it, it, it gives us a taste of what's to come also, because soon we're going to have the Geisha Otaya, we're going to have the library. So this this world is going to be many worlds in one, actually. There'll be a lot of things that you can do in here. I'm actually lagging less now that I'm here. Yeah, because, yeah, because uh, uh, well, it's because uh, Emma scattered the the pickable objects, so she did she deactivated the physics on them right now, basically. Because the world can only support so many people at okay, one so time. Okay, so if you would together, different ways of around here. Back and, uh, mm -hmm. 
I think there's a lot of opportunity to First of all, people, uh, right? it's good that you guys I'm were there for Rinpoche's teaching this afternoon because you won't be giving it again tonight. Last so week, you kind of got the, had an exclusive. Teacher uh, tonight I will do the, uh, instances. I don't know how they did the it, interpretation. But it was really nice. And yeah. um, so I, I think I want to start a little to tradition uh, today. Live streaming I would like to ask instance? you guys. And then that uh, stream just, just can a play in all of these instances. Hey, um, the objects and Emma. We should probably. Oh, Emma, I think it's been some time. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, everybody else is quiet, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. I actually <laughs> uh, have to go attend to some work related things. Um, but right. it's good to Thank see you. Thank you for coming, Emma. Uh, Yes. Nice to meet you, Emma. Thank you. Okay, thanks for coming. Nice Bye. to meet Bye. you. Bye. Th thank you for coming and for scattering the pastries. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no problem. <laughs> Take care, everyone. I really need a coffee right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, I was saying I would like to start a little tradition. Uh, I, I It was suggested to me that we make things a little bit uh, more interactive. Uh, and I think that's a good idea. And oftentimes, after a teaching session, we don't have many questions and all of this. So I would like to know uh, if we could prepare, like every week, come with an idea of uh, try to notice what you've been struggling with with during the week, and we can kind of, uh, if if you are comfortable, you know, telling us, uh, and then we could yeah. look at it from the Buddhist point of view and look at what tools Buddhism offer for daily lives. So that we make it a very practical type of, of teaching. So uh, I will love that. <laughs> yeah, you would like that. So, so yeah. we, we can start right away. Actually, uh, did somebody had a special struggle this week that they would like to share? Uh, yeah, beat uh, or Malka? Well, let's do both. Let's start with beat. Um, me so, too. Well. <laughs> but listening to um what the the prayer and stuff, I thinking about how when I find something that makes me happy and feel joy I will pursue it with no real regard for my you know well-being and happiness and so in this last week I've been discovering VR chat and uh, you know being in, in my time zone I tend to you know pull all-nighters so I can spend time with Americans it's just it's driving me crazy but I need to uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I need to learn to have fun without completely losing all my sleep. <laughs> all right, so you you, you kind of get into a, a a lot of fun. Like I would call it like a burning passion, a momentary burning passion, where you're yeah. very much in it, and um, then it's hard to disconnect from that. Well, yeah. Um, Okay, that's that's a very good opportunity to, to talk about uh, something that is very subtle and very important. Namely, uh, gaming is an escape. And it is amazing the number of escapes that we deal with every day. Um, for example, many of us have a routine that looks like um, we wake up in the morning, we have breakfast, we go to work, and we come back uh, tired. Of course, there are little escapes at work. Uh, sometimes we have a Facebook page open. Uh, sometimes we are uh, typing on our phones. So, so this is called presenteeism. We're, we're present. Our body is present at work, but our mind is not really there. It's, we're thinking about something else. Some people make personal phone calls. I've even seen some women do their nails on their, on their work shift. Okay? So why do they all do that because they feel that it's actually more pleasant than reality it's more pleasant than working and uh the more exhausted you get i would say uh the more dangerous it becomes that you look for pleasure and that you look for an escape so if you come back at uh, at the end of the day and uh you meet your your wife or your significant other or you meet kids uh, what we tend to do is to not deal directly with people also. 
instead of having a meaningful conversation and to take care of one another or to do something complicated, we put a movie on or uh, we do like something simple or we hit the couch or we get hypnotized by TV or we browse mindlessly on the internet. Why? Because we don't feel courageous anymore. We don't feel like we have it in us to deal with the challenges of, of daily life. And so gaming is a very good expression of that because gaming is meant to be pleasurable. It's been engineered to be pleasurable, actually. So uh, it will have a system of leveling up. It will have a like in what's rewarding. Let's think about what's rewarding in VR chat. Uh, one of the aspects I think is you have access to uh, different worlds very easy so you can change your scenery it's like travel so in one way VR chat is travel that's interesting everybody likes travel There's... actually I've been visiting a lot of Japanese worlds recently and uh, it's exotic it's almost like traveling in Japan especially where there's a lot of writing in Japanese and you don't understand what's around you uh, so there's this aspect another aspect of what is rewarding in, in VR chat is that uh, you make connections so you, you kind of meet like-minded people and uh, most people here are, are here to belong, to get together, to form, I would say, little clusters, little families. And so they will tend to give us the reflection that we want to get from ourselves also. Maybe my VR chat friends will give me a better reflection than the reflection I get from my wife. Maybe I will get better validation from my VR chat friends than I will get from my kids. Maybe I feel like a better human being when I'm in VR chat. So there is also this part of the, the mirror of relationship that we spoke about uh, in an earlier talk, uh, which makes it also very addictive because somebody reflecting a good self-image to us is pleasurable as well. And um, there is the, the component of unpredictability in VR chat also. It, it keeps us on our, on our toes uh, because there's always somebody who's going to do something random. <laughs> all, all these crashes, all of these uh, lagging and uh, all these new places to discover. Uh, so I think this also makes it uh, addictive. So VR chat and gaming is no different than using drugs. And in a way, if every day, uh, instead of having a relationship with your family, you pop out a, a DVD and you watch that, or you, or you watch uh, movies on Netflix for three hours without talking to one another, it's also like easy. You understand how this is an escape? Like you're just going hiding in, in a world somehow of your creation or a world of your selection. It's, and uh, then you are shielded from the world. So Rinpoche was speaking earlier about uh, Theravada in Ayana path, uh, which is quite, uh, it's the path taken quite literally from, from the Buddha. And uh, the type of enlightened beings that Theravada creates is called Harats. And the way I would, <laughs> I would uh, maybe refer to this is, and it's not accurate, but just for the image purpose, uh, selfish and like because it's like you are trying to find a happy place in your mind and in your heart that you can go back to to escape from the world in a way not not that you need to escape anymore if you're a good practitioner you don't really need those escapes but you use your mind like a cave so that you are not uh, in samsara anymore and in fact in the theravada and in ayana uh, path the uh importance of renouncing the world is very emphasized so it's a bit like jesus christ that says you know abandon everything and follow me well when you renounce the world in in, uh, in Ariana, it's kind of that thing you, you are just focusing on your activity that brings you pleasure and you're not necessarily mixed with others so that's why you have lots of hermits and people living in caves forests and, and all of that in that tradition they, they have decided not to play the game anymore. So in contrast, Mahayana 
is the courageous path, especially my lineage, which is the Shambhala warrior. So the Shambhala warrior, the attitude of the Shambhala warrior is that when work starts to be boring and you feel like doing your nails or going on Facebook, that's your opportunity to practice right there. Through your mindfulness, you can notice your pulsion to escape your uh, research for pleasure. And you can start using what you have learned uh, to say, okay, I am not going to indulge. I am simply going to uh, use my meditation, c come back to my peace, think nothing of the situation and of the suffering right now. Think nothing of the pain would be more accurate because the suffering is meant to be created. And so that is how you deal with escapes. So beings, if you find yourself like having a strong urge to go gaming, or if you've been looking at your watch and you're like, oh, it's getting late. Well, that is your opportunity to practice what you have learned through Buddhism. See that you are falling prey to your desires, to your attachments, to your escapes. See that you are actually running away from your life right now. And use this realization uh, to, to go back to something healthy. I'd say it's time to snap out of it and maybe go have a walk or run to the cushion and, and clean up your mind a little bit because you are getting stuck. So, uh, uh, does that uh, work? Yeah. I do have a question about yeah. escape and uh, what, uh, what uh, also the prior person said about reaching happiness and such. I've seen a lot of people, because my question would be, where are we escaping from and do we even know? Because I see a lot of people eventually <laughs> want to... Yeah, but I, what I mean is, I see a lot of people eventually want to reach something in life. Uh, and we all want to be happy and, you know, that we, we always have a goal set up for us in the future that we want to reach. And most people eventually their goal is like to have a job, to have a family, to have an own house. And you think like, uh, I mean, in my situation, I'm still alone. Uh, I'm living in a house away from my parents, but still not really living on my own because I share the building. So I still look uh, like, oh, I still haven't done this for my, year, for my age. I still haven't done this. But then I see people, for example, my own family, which I not afraid to share, that to reach this state, like have kids, have a job, have a family, have their own house, yet my family also had issues with not being happy, even though they reached that state so many of us want to reach. So where do we escape from and what do we actually want? Because it feels like a lot of people just don't know what happiness is at its basic level. So I will give you the, the secret to unlimited riches and happiness right now. Your bank account? And it's just one world. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I tried that. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> it can't even be a source of sadness, actually. <laughs> but um, so um, the, the secret to all riches and all happiness is one simple word called contentment. Uh, and this is another interesting thing. When you are escaping from reality, even if you have millions uh, in, in your bank account, you are poor. This is what Shogun Trungpa Rinpoche considered the poverty mentality. If you are stuck in forever becoming something different, if you are forever trying to acquire what you don't have, then in, encoded in this behavior is your rejection of what you are, of what you have, of who you are. How could you bring happiness about by rejecting who, what you have, and where you are, and all of this? It's simply incompatible. So, you know, Buddhism, uh, to me, for many years now, it all boiled down to two things. And one is love, which I relate to contentment, because if I love myself and I love the world and I love everything, then I, I'm supposed to be content as a consequence. 
and our meditation practice is actually the mindfulness and the awareness of this love. So whenever you are not content, you are deluded, you are stuck in samsara. And whenever you are content, you are in nirvana and completely and fully satisfied and enlightened. Now, do not mix contentment with joy. They have nothing to do when, uh, with one another. When people talk about joy, if I was to ask any of you what, what made you happy in the last few days, you would probably tell me about a desire that you satisfied uh, or something that made you feel good about yourself uh, or, or about something that you have done. You would probably not name this five minutes period on a, on a Thursday night where you just felt content with everything that you had. Because that did not bring over the top happiness. You were not jumping up and down. You were simply feeling all right with everything. And that is nirvana. Imagine feeling all right with everything all the time. You would be the Buddha. Right? So it doesn't matter what you do for a living, how many cars or houses you have, whether you live on your own or not, whether you are 90 years old or 15 years old. If you just decide to be content now, you have made it. That's why the Zen tradition emphasizes just sitting just being, just eating. Do everything simply and do not add the layer of judgment on top of it. This is how you are messing up your own happiness. Does that work Sensei. for you, Casper? Yeah, uh, it, it does. Uh, but we just live in a world, I'd say, where people... We, we, we have just brought up where everything is judged upon us, no matter what we do, you know. And that makes it sometimes difficult sure, and, to see things clearly. So society is insane. And what we are trying to do on our Buddhist path is restore our sanity. So obviously that would not make you very popular among your peers because you would be looking for the opposite of what they are looking. They won't understand you are too far apart. But uh, nonetheless, you will find other people that are, especially in Buddhist Sanghas, you will find other people who are trying to be content and are happy to be, uh, to be around others uh, like this. And you will get back that sense of communion. It's just that you've been brought up by a sick society, possibly by a sick family, possibly surrounded by sick friends. So as you uh, transform yourself on the path, your environment will also transform itself. And on a larger scale, that's also how we change the world, one by one, by changing our circumstances uh, uh, through our state of mind. Neojex, you wanted to say something? You mentioned just then feeling okay with everything, creating a state of mind where you just experience things as it is. And I thought that sounded so good. Um, I was just hoping to kind of draw attention to that and maybe just let us all imagine what they'd be like for a minute. Yes. Um, well, thank you for that. And uh, just the thought of it to me is calm. Um, indeed, you know. How, how would light be if from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 at night, I was happy with everything? Actually, you can even do it as a practice. You could wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to be okay with everything that's happening to me. Today I'm going to say yes to everything that is suggested to me and I'm going to try a lot of new things and I'm going to be okay with all of them. These are small practices on a small scale that kind of challenge you and teach you to be okay with the more difficult things also. Um, Actually, Malka, I think I see, you, you had something. There's something else I really so, wanted to say. Casper just yes. said about judgment, and you know, I just I feel compassion when I hear that. Um, yeah, it's great that we can create contentment and enlightenment for ourselves, but a lot of the judgments we think we're getting, it's actually also in our head. Someone might have said something once, and people aren't going around 
I'm judging all the time. You're not going around judging all the time. So when you've heard people's judgments in the past, like, it, it's good to not give that extra space in our mind because it's, it's probably us that's making that bigger than it is. Um, so if you no. are just to focus on your happiness and contentment and then that positivity is things you can then share to the people around you um, you can kind of forget about the judgments if you make them smaller in your mind do that make sense when I say smaller like rather than thinking oh they're judging me bring your focus onto something else because the judgments aren't as big as you think they are yeah, thanks. Right. Or is it what they do all the time? <laughs> they have other things to do than to worry about you as well. Oh. Just like you don't worry about how others look all the time, it's pretty much the same the other way around. I do wonder... Uh, Mark, uh... I think you had a question earlier. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, it was that... Actually, I have two questions, but before that, uh, I, I wanted to ask you if you can move a little bit closer because the camera on the stream and on the record Recording. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's you, great. You were okay. becoming one with the television. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you had a question too? Yeah, I had another question, but probably no one knows. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe Max Mentin knows, I, I'm not sure. But I I saw something on the internet that was really interesting. So there is many things we cannot explain a human beings and instances in here at this dimension. But some of the things are interesting that you still try to think what it can be and how. So one of the things is some monk in their so deep meditation that he's still alive, but he's alive like a couple of centuries. Do you know what? Hi, it was written in the news of the science that uh, some sorry, monk been found it alive. Can still hear me. Yeah, ah. we can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Did you heard about the story? Cool, yeah. I can hear. I lost my audio. Could you just tell them? Just a second. Uh, Senke, you've lost his audio. He's coming back immediately. Okay. okay. Guys, I'm sorry, but it's but time for me to go to sleep. Oh, see you next time again. Oh. See you. Bye, bye for now. Oh, and sorry. Bye. Bye. Yeah. See you next time, guys. Yeah, see you next time. Bye. Bye. It's time for you to meditate. Julia, <laughs> did you hear about? <laughs> yeah. I, I can answer to your question if you want. That he was in a meditative yeah, state and, and and then they woke him up or something like that? What do you mean? What, I'm back. That I'm back. No, please answer it. Jack, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, there, there, are, there are few stories actually of monks who have entered into very deep meditation states and uh, at the moment of their death. And actually the somehow the consciousness has not left their... Uh, um, their envelope. The envelope is dead since long time, but it looks uh, pretty much like a mummy, very well preserved. Uh, one of the later cases was in Mongolia, I think, uh, where they found uh, the body of uh, a monk uh, who died a um, long, long, long time ago. And it is not, I mean, some, some people would see it as auspicious and nice, magical, miraculous, but actually it's not a good idea at all because during this old time, the, the monk doesn't progress. I mean, the consciousness does not progress. It is like um, lock in. So the consciousness might be in a very deep uh, meditative state, um, but it is not uh, a way to liberation it is uh, it is uh, more um, a kind of samadhi uh, as explained in the hindu tradition where the consciousness is very is in very deep absorption state uh, not uh, not acting not reacting but not liberated and not on the way to liberation so 
we see this kind of case more as a sad case. Uh, obviously, these monk uh, or these monks have um, created uh, impressive uh, capacities of meditation, but something was missing at some point, and instead of walking towards liberation, they got locked into this kind of meditative state for for very long. Now, this is what I I can say. Thank you so much, because I didn't understood how this works, and I was thinking, maybe his consciousness go just wandering around into the other dimensions, and he will come back. But his body is like 300 years old, so he he will move. But now and yes, actually, it is not like a zombie case. Uh, the the consciousness is not uh, is not gone, and it is uh, more in absorption. Uh, like in a very um, deep uh, sleep, we c we could say, and uh, even if that consciousness would awake, I mean, would come out of this meditative state, it would just enter into the what we call the bardo. So it would enter into the intermediary state between a life and another, but it would not reenact or reanimate the body. Uh, Three hundred years after, the body would be. Uh, impossible to to reanimate because it is uh, dead since too long, and uh, during the the process the dissolution process at the death time, uh, when the energy dissolves, uh, it cannot really uh, re-expand. So it dissolved the the consciousness enter into this deep meditative state, and the only way out is to. Um, wake up in a way, uh, the consciousness wakes up and uh, follow the natural course of death, enters into the bardo, um, eventually realize something spiritual or not, and if not, continues towards the next rebirth. Hmm. So, so, so Rinpoche, would, would you say that this is like a self-induced coma? Well, it, uh, it is, uh, from the consciousness point of view, it is a kind of self-induced coma, but uh, the body is, is, is truly dead. The only thing that makes it to look, um, let's say, a little bit uh, uh, real, I mean, it, it did not decay because the consciousness is still there, but uh, the body is, is truly dead. There is no circulation of fluids at all. Uh, the brain cells are, are not functioning and, and anything. So there would not be any way back possible as in a coma, we can hope somebody who fell into coma could, uh, could wake up in, in his body. In this case, the only, the only option is to uh, come out of this uh, coma type of meditation and uh, continue out of the body towards the next life. Right. So by the way, you guys, as a disclaimer, this is unexplained uh, because, for example, science doesn't even know what consciousness is. That's something that we cannot measure to this day. We don't know what it's made of, where it resides for sure. We think it's in the brain because we have like electric activity in the brain that kind of corresponds to our wakeful moments and our thinking process and all of this. But actually, it could be, and that's a, a theory as well, it could be that our brain is just a radio, and what you're saying is the brain, like, catching the signal. So, this is a very difficult case to explain for this as well, because if you don't know what consciousness is, how did they detect that the consciousness was still in, in the monk? And let's say we accept that. Uh, Let's say we accept that they did detect that they did some brainwave scans or they did some magnetic testing and so they found something strange going on around this, this mummy. Uh, still, we don't really know uh, if it's been like in, ingrained in space-time or if it's in the body itself or maybe both. Or, and we don't know also what experience, what experience is this person really having. For example, in a coma, some people report that they could hear their families visiting and what they were saying, and that they wake up uh, from a coma after 16 years and they have memories of that. But for a lot of them, it's just a very unconscious deep sleep. So is this a remnant? Is this trace from that? I, I tend to be very conservative about this uh, these phenomena because... Uh, as Rinpoche pointed out, first of all, I don't think it's something that we should strive for. Uh, our, 
our minds can serve us well but can also play tricks on us and a tricks that a trick that would last 300 years is not a very funny one <laughs> so i would probably refrain from uh, from this if i could uh so take these things they are fascinating they're interesting but i would advise you to take all of these mysterious things quite lightly uh you know if uh, sci science will unpack it for us eventually if uh, there is something there uh, and the tradition is full of beautiful stories like that but uh, this is not the goal of the path i guess is what i'm trying to say um all right uh, rico did you have something that you wanted to ask as well well um I want to share a situation from from the beginning of this week, but uh, I'm not sure if we kind of change the subject. So. Uh, oh sure, sure. It's, it's, it's for this. Because <laughs> it kind of comes to the same thing that has been uh, you said, and um, like uh, Casper, where we're talking about that uh, somehow everything before before this week seemed seem before like. Two weeks ago, everything seemed like in its right place. I was in the right moment. Everything was growing good, going in the right direction. And all of a sudden, I find myself in an ugly situation in which I need to take decisions I kind of don't want to know, to take. I basically, uh, just to give you context, got into legal troubles with my roommates. So uh, I don't want to, to keep living in the place where I'm living right now. But this is an opportunity to let me go out from this kind of cocoon I built for myself for the last for the last weeks, last months, years actually, <laughs> for the last years. And now I got the opportunity to go abroad, but I need to take decisions that are making me very uncomfortable <laughs> and it's difficult. So kind of... <sighs> This is kind of what's happening on my experience for for a moment. So yeah, I will I will love to hear what Buddhism could tell me to about these situations. Thank you. Um, I I loved earlier that um, Rinpoche spoke about fear, um, and how the, the fear is pretty much the source of all evil in our life. Um, I'm paraphrasing. Obviously, he didn't say that, but I'm saying it. <laughs> um, Fear is what gives birth to desire, and and frustrated desires are what give birth to anger. And you can say that there are only two very tangible emotions that humans experience, and I would call one fear, and I would call the other love, which is uh, kind of the same duality of the devil versus God that we've been hearing about in Christianity but uh, much more so in, in Buddhism when we think about it in terms of our mind. So basically, fear and insecurity disorganizes us. Uh, because when we are fearful, as Rinpoche pointed out earlier, we are trying to protect ourselves. Actually, we feel vulnerable. So we, we want to wear an armor and we want to defend ourselves from the world. We are not at one with the world. We feel attacked or, and threatened by it. And, um, and when that happens, then through collaboration with the world and through flow with the world becomes impossible because how can I flow with someone that I'm getting ready to fight? And so it's pretty much the same thing about the world. On the other hand, when you're experiencing love and peace, then you are welcoming everything. And uh, there was the analogy of the mirror-like wisdom. Let's imagine that instead of an actual mirror, let's imagine the reflective surface of a lake. So the lake reflects the entire world. It reflects the sky. It reflects the, the, the trees and, and the grass and the people around it and, and the moon. Everything is in there and it's very quiet. The, if something comes, let's say uh, an asteroid or somebody throws a rock, yeah. If somebody throws a rock, the, the lake will reflect the rock coming at it the entire time and it won't run away. It won't try to avoid the rock. And what it will do is that it will simply take it in and it will break, the reflection will break for a while. But then it will close on the rock and uh, recover its original piece. So 
that's how love works love takes undesired events like a rocks like rocks being thrown at us but it recovers from the event fast and it goes back to the peace if you are on the other hand fe fearful you will start by wearing an armor and then that won't remove your fear because the person that attacks you will get more clever as well and they will find armor piercing uh weapons and so then you will build a castle and then you will you will uh, raise an army and then you will never end trying to defend against the world it's a very vicious circle so all of that to say just one thing do not let under any circumstances fear drive your life i am very sad at the world right now with the pandemics because everybody is afraid uh, people that are otherwise that appear otherwise very mature very intelligent very uh, wholesome now we are discovering that they're losing it and I'm not saying that the threat is not real I'm just saying that there is a way to deal with the threat and that this way is not fear because what what's happening right now for example in our world is that people are threatening one another for wearing a mask or not wearing a mask taking a vaccine or not taking a vaccine exposing themselves uh, or not exposing themselves and you have these factions and these uh, and and you have like the uh, the conspirationists and and uh, the righteous and the neutral it's it's all becoming very political and the reason it's doing that is fear People are, and it's a very strong fear right now, people are afraid to die. But see all the chaos that this is causing. The world is upside down right now. And that's what you get when you operate from fear. The challenges that you are facing right now, Rico, just like everything else in the world, will come to pass. So if you just manage them with love, sure, you might receive a few rocks and, and it might hurt, but don't think anything of the pain if your aspiration is right if you know that you are doing the right thing if you know that you're moving towards the right destination then pain is all right that's something important and if you take something away from what i'm saying right now take this away you are not supposed to not feel pain pain is built in you Pain is a, a protection mechanism so that you don't kill yourself doing simple tasks. Pain is useful. You need pain in your life. Just don't make it worse. So we have to not necessarily be looking for pain because that, that would be a destructive behavior. But we don't necessarily need uh, to fight it either. Sometimes it's, it's quite okay to just welcome events as they are wait for them to pass time heals us anyway and then carry on if you develop that kind of elasticity mentally and emotionally then with time things start to hurt less for less and less time and so they don't destabilize you what i'm hearing right now rico is that you are out of balance you've been destabilized by your fears you have made some moves that you believe are the right ones, I'd, I'd say. But then fear kicked in because there are consequences to your actions. And, uh, and, and now it kind of threw you off balance. So if this is an important aspiration, just make sure you stick with it. And uh, you, you know what? The less you will fight back, the less escalation will happen. So you can keep that a, a little battle and endure, or you can escalate it into a war. Or, sometimes, the best course of action is to do nothing at all. So, uh, that, that could be your next strategy also. You, maybe you, you leave it like that until you are absolutely certain. Uh, this, is, this is not a fearful attitude. So, my, my path, again, on the Shambhala warrior uh, lineage, is fearlessness. Because if you manage to achieve fearlessness in your life, you have also, in the process, achieved enlightenment, a stable enlightenment. As long as fear remains, delusion remains. 
Does that help? Thank you very much. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. I needed so, to hear something like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> great, great. So let's do a short meditation practice today. Uh, by the way, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think it's very fun to do that in the cafe today. You all it seem is. so cozy, and uh, I, I feel I'm having a chat in my living room with you guys. <laughs> <It's really good. laughs> except with, except that we have Yoda here, we have uh, Samurai here, we have some anime girls behind us. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, some, but sometimes there are strange things going on in my living room as well, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. So actually, since I don't have the meditation timer, I am holding a mala, uh, which is um, uh, just a sec. An egg timer? <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, so uh, uh, Julia was talking to me off, off the record. Um, so I'm holding a mala in my hand right now, which is a, um, uh, gosh, what's the name of that in English? Uh, One of those playing beats. Praying beads? Rosary. Yeah. yeah. Pray, praying beads, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so the way, yeah, or rosary. So the, the way I use this actually is I just count the breaths. So we're just going to do one turn, uh, breathing slowly, following our breath as we do normally in, in Shamatha. And uh, to me, that corresponds to about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, if I take my, my sweet time so let's just do that to settle down uh, because we've had a long session and then we can call it off yes Mala uh, Mal Malka <laughs> I'm calling you Mala now shall we do the inspiration aspiration uh, we didn't we will do the dedication in the end we did the aspiration in, in the beginning with uh, with Julia if you remember all right so uh, let us settle in let's take uh, just three deep breaths relax your limbs relax your head your neck your back let all your body go very softly make sure you're sitting steadily all right then let's start please So today, since we've been talking a lot about uh, the ground, I would like us to focus on a specific part of our, of our breathing. I want us to focus on the gap between what you inhale and uh, the, gap, well, the, the, the gap that happens between each inhalation and exhalation. So look at this and, and think of it as the ground from which your breath is born. And uh, try to see how basically the entire world is born from your mind in pretty much the same way. So I won't talk anymore until the, the end of the session. Just focus on your breath and bring back the mind. Should it wander gently, label your thoughts, thinking, your emotions, feeling. If you have a hitch, itching. And uh, try to uh, just go back to your peace.
sure how long this was exactly, but uh, did you guys manage to relax a little bit? Yeah, totally. Yes, definitely. <clears throat> did uh, somebody get an interesting insight from observing the gap between the breath? <clears throat> I did. Um, yes. I noticed that it captivated my attention in a new way. But then I also noticed after a little while, my mind was not the same cap but captivated. So it was a new, anch new anchor point that I could keep bringing myself back to. So thanks. <laughs> and uh, we would like to say hello to baby at the same time. <laughs> hello. <laughs> All the meditators said to say hello. I'd Interacting. say, I'd say it's <laughs> just I tend to always deal just with my anxiety issues. Uh, my hypersensitivity uh, tends to increase at certain moments when I'm more aware of all things. Uh, you know, like, uh, it, it, it's part of anxiety in general, like, has my chest always felt like this? Do I feel more lightweighted than normal? Stuff like that, you know, that I'm trying to control. And that's something uh, I've been so, dealing with for quite some time. So that's interesting, because I used to have that a lot. It, it used to be crippling and prevent me from, from meditating. Yeah, because, it, it, it even sometimes uh, uh, makes me unable to go outside the house, uh, although I'm working on it. Right. Uh, just to relate to meditation, I uh, had very, very bad uh, pulmonary problems as a kid. And so when I discovered this practice and there were telling me to focus on the breath, it, it used to basically freak me out because when I started noticing my breath, I was interested in knowing, am I breathing right? Am I breathing too long? Am I breathing too deep? Uh, is my breathing difficult? Is my breathing... And, uh, and basically I would kind of panic about it. I would, I would start creating these fears that maybe I'm going to have, uh, uh, asthma or maybe I have a bronchitis or may and maybe this session won't go well because I'll be out of breath and so on so this is a very good illustration of the mental suffering that, that we cause ourselves to uh, anxiety and, and fear because breathing is just what it is breathing it happens all the time naturally but the minute that you focus on it if you had that extra layer of worry, then you're putting yourself through hell. So, um, try to notice yourself, Casper, with the, the, the minute that you're starting to walk in that path. Um, like the minute that you see that you, you have a, a narrative happening in your mind. Just very softly, don't try to control it, don't try to overpower it or to fight it. Just say, oh, this narrative has started. Just notice what it's doing. And by noticing it, you will remove yourself a little bit from it. And it won't have as much power as it did before. As you get better uh, with this, I, I think it will help with your anxiety. Mm hmm Sensei? Yes. Um, I also used to be very anxious socially and um, I just want to take Sensei's advice um, about meditation and step it into how it can apply to life as well um, so earlier in the talk Sensei said en enlightenment would just be being content and peaceful and happy all the time and then I said hey let's take a moment to think about it and that's what really changed my life is instead of thinking about being nervous a lot, I trained myself to think about being relaxed and happy. And if you, if you think about how many times have you thought about being anxious in the last month, it's probably thousands. Um, so if you were to start practicing,
practicing, thinking, being, how not nice would it be if you felt super relaxed? How nice would it feel to feel totally confident? And it might be hard to imagine that to start, but if you try a few times through the day, in a couple of days, you'll be like, wow, that would feel great. And if you just keep thinking about feeling great and confident, I'm sure you can train that into yourself. And it changed my life, and I, I hope you do that too. Mm, I've... Uh... I've been, uh, uh, I used, to, I've come from f afar, I'm not ashamed to admit this, that uh, for about six to seven years, I escaped my anxiety after the loss of my father by actually uh, going through the phase of addiction because alcohol really took away my fears and anxiety to the point uh, medication would never do. Uh, I would have no fears, actually I would feel nothing anymore, but I learned the hard way that uh, it's a never ending circle that you have to stay in, because uh, the moment uh, reality hits and for someone that's been through that, I can tell you sobriety, uh, just returning back to reality, is one of the most fearful things to go through, uh, but there's still a lot I have to learn, uh, even though I faced those challenges and overcame them. But indeed, it's a practice that I admit that I'll keep on continuing. Okay. Well, I, I hope uh, that this new path that you're now walking on with us will, will help you in that way, Casper. Uh, it did more oh, yeah. for me. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that it did for many others as well, so... I really wish that you that you get better with this and, and anybody else that is suffering the same. That's also a good practice, you know, when we speak about bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. Like, you are never alone. No matter what you feel, there is somebody else feeling anxious right now or feeling scared or fe feeling depressed. And we are all doing that to ourselves in a way. So I find great compassion in this because I relate. I relate to these emotions. I live through them. And uh, now instead of feeling lonely and me against the world, I can feel that at least I'm not suffering completely alone and I can have a thought for those people that are worst off. It's also why I'm not... Mm? Yeah. You mentioned drinking and I just mm. wanted to share a, li a little story. When I was a, a very young adult, I think around 18 or 19 years old, I would when I would get uh, really sad, uh, I would walk to a little bar close to home and basically I would have a beer and use the waitress as a psychiatrist as I'm sure some of you have done. <laughs> yeah uh, I've been there <laughs> been there done that but you know what often happened to me is I would go there and I would be very sad walking in and I would not get drunk I would just like order a beer and hoping for a chat but every time there was like somebody that had the worst day ever like sitting behind me and they would start talking about it and then i would realize <laughs> that like my suffering is nothing you know <laughs> this 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 was not a bad day after all and so i would end up chatting with them and making them feel better instead of, yeah. of indulging <laughs> in my psychiatry session <laughs> and uh and that kind of showed me the power of compassion, how caring for another kind of takes away our pain as well. It, so... It's what, uh, what, what I personally do and why, why I'm not ashamed to admit about my past with alcohol and addiction is because I no longer see how I used to see it. Uh, prior to my life, I saw my six, seven years as wasted, like... Uh, my family was ashamed, certain parts are probably still ashamed looking down upon it. Uh, I still have conflict with certain family members uh, with how they see our family side. But nevertheless, instead of seeing it as a waste of time or something I can't get back, I see it rather that I've been through suffering, but I c can uh, change that suffering into ways that I can maybe help others that going 
Yeah. Uh, and, to and and, Ke and Casper, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the the occasion, the opportunity is just too good. Mm -hmm. If I was asking everybody here to raise their hand or or to stand up if they had a problem before with their with their family and if they felt that they had wasted time in their life, I would think that pretty much all the hands would go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> So that's a very relatable feeling, you see. Yeah, I, I see you guys. You, you all kind of raised it one after the other. So yeah, it's 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 something that we go through uh, as as a mm -hmm. human race, and that's what ties up. We we all think, and we're fed up by the media's and by society that like we're unique and we can become the president of the United States and achieve whatever we want, but we never hear about the fact that we're all humans. And Having the same emotions, the same challenges, and the same troubles in our intimacy and in our families. And uh, if anything, the sangha is is uh, a good space to to realize that and, and commune together. Mm -hmm. um, now, guys, I'm just gonna call off the session because it's been almost two hours and a half, and the next one's <laughs> about to begin. <laughs> and I, <laughs> it's not, but uh, I, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a privilege to, to get Rinpoche with us today. Mm -hmm. And it's not much of a big celebration, but I do wish you a happy new year today. And oh, yeah. a Merry Christmas if I don't see you again. Uh, it's, a movie. Happy new year. it's my wife and I Friday. have an anniversary as well. Oh, oh wow. wow. Happy wow. anniversary. Congratulations. Well, I do have to. Uh, I do have one more question. After all of this, can we yes. learn air bending? Because you were talking about the solstice. For another teacher. <laughs> 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 well, Malka is right. Uh, tai Chi is probably the closest thing that you will get here to hair bending. So uh, <laughs> try, try to get into Qigong and Tai Chi. You might, uh, you might get some uh, satisfaction Look, I'm, from I'm it. We'll, some of it. We'll, we'll never know when the Fire Nation might attack, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, Neil Jax? I'm yes, doing a little bit of hair bending here. Can you oh, see yeah. it? Qigong or Tai Oh, and Can one more thing I wanted to say. Hey, uh, sorry, Malka, let, let me finish with one phrase and I, I'm letting you speak. Um, I just wanted to uh, tell you guys that on Wednesdays now, uh, either Emma and or Neojax are going to hold sessions at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern uh, so that we accommodate people on the West Coast a little bit better. Mm. Um and uh, also because the group is growing so much you see like today the, the room was full again and uh, so we i think i feel we need to spread the the the, the attendance a little bit and also on friday i would like to invite you guys uh, on on every fridays maybe not this one because it's christmas but uh, next year let's restart with um, open teacher friday i wrote about that in the channel if you guys have an idea, like you would like to teach about something, for example, I've heard people here that were struggling with ADHD, uh, you, sometimes you have addiction, anxiety, or you just like a, a good teaching, a good teacher, something helped you, you want to share it. So Friday, basically, I would welcome anybody to come and do a little session for us uh, to learn uh, about what they found and their experience. Uh, I think it's, it doesn't have to be like 100% Buddhist. We can actually do the teaching and have a Buddhist conversation afterwards if you want. But the idea is just to open the stage to everybody so that we have a richer experience uh, in our Sangha. So what do you guys think nice. of that? Is it a good idea? And yeah, when would that be? Like good idea. Yeah. Uh, Friday? Yeah, not, not this Friday though. Oh, yeah. uh, this Friday there might or might not be a Dharma movie. Uh, oh. I am not sure how the 25th is gonna go, but uh, just check your Discord if you're free on um, mm -hmm. on Friday, and maybe something will happen. I've got to go. All yeah. right, mm. I'm so going, guys. Gonna... Thank you for all. Dedication. Thank you for Sorry. everything. Oh. Mm.
Okay, you wanted to do this settle? No? Guys, we have, we have an Obama here, it seems. Obama joined yeah, us, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Fire yes. it up! Dedication, Julia. <laughs> let's, let's do our dedication so that we benefit others. Mm. Exactly. For the benefit of beings without exception, I dedicate without any reticence whatsoever all the merit that accrued through virtuous acts to the incomparable excellence of totality. All right. <laughs> we may now disappear, guys. See you soon. Have a good day. Well, Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Bye bye. And uh, hey. Chikonk, I think you can bye. learn a Mr. School. There is one dude in Mr. School that he know what kind of Chikonk, and he says that he teaching that. Mm. Just you know, if you wanna. Bye. Mm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Till the next. Hey, Cas Casper. Mhm. Mm Sorry to hear about your father. Yeah, it's okay. Well. Uh, uh, no, because I have put uh, it myself I, as. Uh, I kind of lost my father because uh, he decided to take his own life, and yeah, uh, that's what upset me back in the day. That's kind of why I went into a self-destructive cycle, but like I got him. over it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I'd now. say it's, I accepted uh, it. I think, it. I, uh, I think getting over it is yeah, a big to say. My cousin, who who was my hero growing up, also mm -hmm. ended his own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's really, uh, when did that happen? Are we talking about years? 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's actually a big part of why I'm so passionate about people learning to train their mind. I don't want anyone to take their thoughts or feelings to a place like that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it's that it's a very complex. Uh, once you go through that, you of course have to just the general question of why did it happen, and then you have the guilt complex as well. You know, could you have stopped it? Uh, could you have prevented it? Uh, you go through hey. a lot of uh, emotions in general. So that happened to me too, but I have a strong response to that. Because it doesn't happen to me at all anymore. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is you couldn't. At the time, you were what you were. Mm -hmm. So all you can do now is focus on what can you do now. Mm -hmm. um, and that might sound really simplistic, but it's the truth. And so whenever I see any of those doubts or any thoughts come up, they don't come up in me anymore, but when they were, mm -hmm. I just stepped into... Hey, I want to think about this in a way that helps me and that is real. And the reality is, is all you can do is focus on now. Indeed. Sadly enough, I took yeah. the mistake thinking that uh, drinking my problems away was the best solution because at that time it felt like it worked, but uh, it comes with a deep price eventually. <laughs> you know, I was saying spending a bit of time every day imagining being calm and tranquil and present, like practicing mm -hmm. that. Um, one nice thing about that is that all the good things that you got from drinking, mm -hmm. you can train that into who you are. So then your reality becomes that. It's not like you have to sober up and face stuff again. You actually make the way you move through reality strong mm -hmm. and happy. And you know, you know, I said it spends a bit of time every day imagining it. And I actually mean, like, this, this is what I did. Like, five minutes, just imagine being happy and, like, practice being this happy, content person every day and feel that you're retraining who you are. Like, it's, a, it's wild how strong that can be if you just do it regularly and train it into yourself. But that asks discipline, and uh, that's difficult to do in the beginning, especially because I was still young of age when it happened. Well, I'm still I'm young, I'd say. I'm still, I'm still young. I, yeah. I would say I'm still young. I'm not old. I'm not old. I'm still young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean now, man. The past yeah. doesn't matter. You know, what you did at the time, you did the yeah. best thing you knew how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so right now, today and tomorrow, giving yourself that time to know that you can be 
peaceful and happy and awesome and imagining what that's like. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just saying it again to start brain programming you with it so that you can then keep programming yourself with it. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't know if you can hear the baby crying in the background. Yeah, yeah. And the but I, I, I gotta yes. go. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got to speak to Zalgo for just a minute and then head out. Oh, Rico, just, uh, great to see just, you again. Just one second. Thank because, you very much, uh, Take care. Zenke asked, awesome. Zenke asked me to record, uh, but if you want, I can cut off this conversation I had with you. Uh, if that's something. Ah. Mm-hmm. I'm totally happy to share it if you're happy to share mm-hmm. it. I'm going to private yeah. it anyway so that only the ones on the link can see it so it's not public and I'll share it on the Discord. Uh, but just so you know, if you want me to edit something out, uh, just. No, I, that I'm happy with everything knowledge. that I share. Mm-hmm. Cool, thanks, Casper. Mm-hmm. All right. No problem. Thanks for adding me, Mr. Gonzo. All right, I gotta run. So I'll see mm-hmm. you soon. See you soon, Obama. Make America great again. Wait, no, that's the wrong guy. <laughs> Shit. Hey, Hi. <laughs> take care, guys. <laughs> yeah, take care. Bye. That's such a weird surprise. I'm sure. I took you my I'm good. Yeah, really good. Um, gotta gotta be quick because um, okay. but the baby needs me and I'm having a med. I've got a job interview in a minute. But yeah, I definitely oh. want to talk to you for a little bit. Yeah. Um, how oh. am I? Wrapped up in the baby. baby. Baby's great. <laughs> yeah, mm. I saw the pictures Manu showed me. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing he's so... all the time now. I love it. Yeah, and Manu is, really loves your baby. <laughs> he thinks it's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Malise? Malise is good. Today's our anniversary. Um, oh. Yeah, so we had a really beautiful morning with lots of hugs and happiness, which is really sweet. <laughs> And Marlies, Johanna asked, how are you? She's good. <laughs> <laughs> Very busy being a mum. Yeah, that's true yeah. for both of us. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. You want to mm. talk to Manuel? A bit? Um, give him a big hug from me. I'll see him soon. Um, okay. Yeah. And, Hopefully and you have a job. A job interview have... in... Yeah. Yeah, I left for Google. For you or... Oh, ah, yeah, you left me. Google. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Big news. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I haven't really told anybody, so uh, it's secret just for you and okay, me. Okay, I yeah. won't, won't tell anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, you, you will... Hopefully I'll see you do... soon. I hope so too. Can, can I have a high five? I don't know how it works, <laughs> but I try. <laughs> When, uh, <laughs> yeah. When they we were talking about, oh my god. When they were talking about, what, what uh, am I? Well, you're, you're Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> you're a Yoda. Oh, you're this cool. T- yeah, you look super cool. <laughs> I wish I. You didn't I know you were a Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> no. She put on her boyfriend's headset and just suddenly oh, became Yoda. Oh yeah. You you hold on, hold on. Give me yeah. a sec. Give me a second. Oh, I can't copy it. So, uh, but yeah, you're a Yoda. You're an. Uh, okay. Actually, I wanted to ask Manuel a question about it. Could I speak yeah. to him before yeah, I go? Yeah, sure. Manu? Yeah. Yeah. My man. So I tried to clone yeah. this Yoda, and when I do, all I see is your freaking mushroom. I, like, is there something weird about this Yoda? No, this, I have um, cloning after? disabled for my avatars, but if you want to clone it, I can, can turn it off. Where did now. you get it from? It's a uh, hundred avatars. Uh, there's a world where you can actually get it. Let me check. But normally, uh, you can click on this avatar and you yeah. see oh, I can't clone it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It, because I haven't, I have disabled it in my settings. You can't. But clone I see my the avatar. mushroom. I don't even see Yoda. Mm. Oh, that's weird. Maybe there's also a bug. Let me check. Where can I enable that? Again, anyway, dude. Advanced. This is taking too long. I gotta no go, idea. man. The baby needs me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lots sure. of love. I'm gonna give you a hug. Love you lots, man. Good to have you here. Give your Hannah a hug from me, and uh, see you soon. Oh, bye bye. I have you. Bye. You have you haven't heard me until this point, right? Because I was muted. Um, just while I was saying goodbye, I didn't hear you. No. Oh, okay. Do you hear me all the whole time? It was weird because I was seeing this sign that I was muted, but yeah. Fine. I heard you right, until you. you said you'd check your settings. 
Oh, yeah. then I probably hit the button. That's why I, I, I yeah. said I just wanted to say I have cloning disabled, but next time you can clone it. I heard that. So yeah. oh, okay, cool. I can't clone it. You're still a freaking mushroom when I clone yeah, you. I still. I yeah, think I, I might still be clashing. Disabled it because you said you don't have the time. So the next time you can clone it. Yeah. Am I still here? Hold <laughs> All on. Right. Yeah, give you're here. Second. All right. Yeah, see give you guys. me a second. I gotta run. Bye bye. Yeah, I think my VR chat just froze. Oh. Ah, I'm stuck in time. I, I wonder if this is one of the Buddhist practices, being stuck in time. Maybe. Mm, how do I get out of it? I don't know. <laughs> mm. No Buddhist is here anymore. Let me meditate about it. Well, Yoda. You're, you're a Yoda. Yeah, no, is, wasn't no, 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 Yoda... No, no. Wasn't Yoda a Buddhist in a I certain way? Maybe. <laughs> oh well. I don't, I don't know if Buddha was, a, but maybe he was also like a meditator. So at least that that's definitely a thing for him. To be fair, when you were, when, when he was like, uh, fear leads to ang anger leads to fear. I was like, oh, are we going to get a Yoda talk here? <laughs> uh, I kind yeah. of forgot how it. I uh, kind, kind of, of forgot how it went. Uh, Anger leads to fear, fear leads to hatred, hatred leads to the dark side. Yes, that's mm. true. It kind of is, that's also what kind of struck me. If you look at the media and movies and stuff, there's so many really good stuff in there that you don't realize until mm. you actually know what it means. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just in general how a lot of stuff works, you know, from politics to... It's sensation and uh, in a way even fear is a sensation. That's why people like to play horror games, but at least they can turn the game off when it gets too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. Doesn't work for, like that in the real world. <laughs> oh, no, 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 uh, no. All right, I have I have to leave mm -hmm. now. And uh, I'll probably nice have to upload, to upload this recording in the meantime. And I think I have to stop mm -hmm. uh, VR chat because it effectively froze. Well, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. I'll see you guys. Well then, see you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Yeah. See you later.